communication error. Welcome to episode 54 of the Communication Error Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, John Ebo. I, I don't know the saying that Cheesy always does. Even a year later, I don't know the saying that Cheesy does. I'll write it out for you. It's fine. I think you already did, and I just don't care. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> but this is one year and one week anniversary of the podcast. And to get us through, we have a very special guest, another member of the Carpool Gaming crew, Sean Capri. Welcome. How are you? I'm so glad you guys got the rest of them first, and I eventually got on the show. You had the oh, we're missing like six on. of them. We're missing like six. No, we still we got to go like, through the rest. That's true. We keep yeah, multiplying. Eight, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, thank you so much, Sean, for being here. Obviously, you are like one of the biggest, if not the biggest, host of gaming podcasts, plural, because you have so many. Are are you that, that I will agree with. I was shaking my head the whole time. I don't want I don't want I don't I don't do well with any of that. But yes, we I have well, a you should take it. Where we the crown? Where the crown? <laughs> I don't know about that. But oh, Seth's trying to catch you with the amount of podcasts he does. So I think Seth is way beyond me. Seth does like six. I think he's already done six today. Like Jeez. he's just rolling through, man. <laughs> Love Seth. But yeah, you have many podcasts. Um, are you ever tired? I'm all, <laughs> that's my secret <laughs> cheesy. I'm always tired. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, um, I I don't know about you guys, but like I caught the sickness early on. You know, it's just like this is the most fun thing I could ever possibly imagine doing. I want to do this always. What other things can we talk about? What other things can we record and put on the Internet? And so, yeah, it just sort of like multiplied uh, early in the days to the point where I actually needed to bring more people on to do the podcast that actually I would really like to be doing. But I'm I'm out of time, you know, mm-hmm. like that's kind of where carpool happens is because I just can't be on all the shows, but I'd want all those shows that would be I, I love all the things that we that we create, but I, I physically am unable to be on all of them. So I got some friends to do. them. So, yeah, it's there's too many. But, but uh it's it's a fun creative uh, outlet that I didn't know that I genuinely needed. Like this is it's so compelling and just like automatic for me now that obviously this was something I needed in my life years before I found it pretty late in in my in my timeline here. So, well, the history of carpool gaming is is so deep, and I love like the beginnings of it. And I want you to tell everybody how that started. But before we do, Johnny, let's just get into some server maintenance real quick, real fast, and uh, we'll continue with Sean Capri. Yeah. So don't forget to leave five star reviews uh, on Apple, Spotify, and I think. Well, I don't know if YouTube Music has reviews, but I think everything has migrated to YouTube Music from Google Podcasts. I think that's Is something that that's happened. working? I think so. Okay. For now. Yeah. Until, mm-hmm. until, <laughs> until they, they shut they it down. Until they change it again. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, then oh, Amazon yes. Alexa, whatever you do over there, do, do that. But we did, get, we did get two new reviews. So the first one is from Burleson. It says, awesome podcast. I drive a lot to work, and I'm always looking for good podcasts. This is one of them. So thank you for that review. Thank you. And then uh, Mikey left another five-star review saying, happy birthday. Thank you for all the people that wish us happy one-year anniversary. Thank you so much, Mikey. And then we did get one on April 1st that I think we missed that might be one of my favorites. It's five stars, and it's titled Error. And says, I accidentally sent the same review twice. Ignore the second one. <laughs> so, you hey, know, a review is I don't a know review. how it works. I don't, know, I don't know how the reviews work. Like, one day we have 32, and then the next day we have, like, 30. Like, where do they go? They just disappear. Yeah. To an enigmatic tube. Some lady is just, like, <laughs> catching them. Just coming down, man. Just collecting them. Thump. <laughs> But uh, yeah, follow us, Calm Error Podcast everywhere. Give us five star reviews. We'll shout them out on the show. Say your name, all the cool stuff. Tell your parents, tell your mom, tell your uh, siblings. And uh, Sean, who else should they tell? Everybody. Hide your, hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> Write those reviews. Ain't nobody got time for you not writing reviews. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Sean, we ask everybody, 
this really, really important question, and you better answer it right. Mm. Uh oh. Super Mario Bros. 3 or Super Mario Bros. World? God, I hate this question so much. I hate it so much. I have to say three. Yes. I don't like, like it. Uh. I don't like it. I don't like it. I look, I'm not I'm not I'm not happy saying not four. Uh you know what I mean? Like it's uh -huh. uh, but th three is what comes from from my heart. And I'll tell you this much. Um my wife and I, we just celebrated our 10 year anniversary, and on our Congrats. invitations uh back in 2014. Our invitations were in the style of Super Mario 3. We went away on what a do you cruise mean? and well, I, I should show you guys actually, but we we made up our own like, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a terrible part-time sorta of, kind of graphic designer. I know just enough to like how to use like Photoshop and stuff, just barely enough to do a little damage. And mm -hmm. so we kind of just like took a bunch of assets from Mario 3 and cobbled together um a whole bunch of stuff that were in the style of Mario 3. The We went on a cruise. We got married on a cruise out of Florida. It was very sweet. Um, so we had a lot of information we needed to convey to people. How did you? How were you going to come on this cruise with us? What are all the stops and all these things? So we included an, instru an instruction booklet with mm -hmm. it. We had a little, like, cartridge that kind of opened up, and inside it was, like, more information. The RSVP uh, little card was the note from Peach. You know, inside is nice. the, the P wing and everything. I should show you guys. It was that's amazing. It that's was awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like the, so I think the the art style, among so many other things, with Mario Three is like kind of it. That box art is unmatched. You know, mm -hmm. um, and it's just it's unbelievable that it's on an NES. I feel like people forget the other games we were playing on the NES and the other games we we're playing just in general at the time. And then mm -hmm. you have Mario three. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? You guys got me all worked up here, man. I'm going to be sweating. <laughs> we're just six minutes into the damn show. I'm just like all hot and bothered here. Holy crap. Yeah. Normally I'm like offended by people's answers of mm. Super Mario Bros three, but like that is, I think that's justified. That's Wait, a pretty I have good a, reason. I have a huge yeah. announcement, huge announcement. What's it's all tied up. It's all tied up. What's seven tied to up? seven. That's awesome. Super Mario World and Super Mario Bros. Oh. 3. It's all tied up. After a year. After a year. It's all tied up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I brought I balance. Our, yeah. I don't know if our numbers add up. There's people that we missed, right? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded pretty legit to me. <laughs> I do have uh, a, I do have another question. I have another question. This is okay. brand new uh, for this week. Mm -hmm. So we have the bet going about Nintendo is not going to release any actual new games for the remainder of the year after <laughs> Luigi's Mansion Two. I mean, that's not even a new game. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the the rules are they can't. Well, it has to be a, a brand new game. It can't be a remake or remaster. Mm -hmm. And it can't be Metroid Prime 4. Because I think that's pretty much a given. But yeah. there was that leak. Well, I guess it wasn't a leak. It was like an actual thing from the ESRB about the Nintendo World Championships oh, yes. on the NES. Yes. And my question that I put out there was, does that count? as a new game if it's just a compilation Ooh. of parts of other games is that a new game like it kind of is but it really isn't like it's almost like they're listening to you guys going like <laughs> what are you gonna do with this one <laughs> so what, what, I'm hearing, <laughs> what i'm hearing is he has to eat half of the one chip because that's the bet if if there is a new game that's coming out johnny has to eat the one chip challenge Oh, this is amazing because I have this thing in 2024. I'm not buying new games this year. I know. It's incredible. And I think but you're getting count? away well, with well, so much. I mean, much. it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to not buy new games in 2024. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of with you, man. I do feel like I'm missing out on some. And I am going to... Yeah, that's a whole other... That's a whole other thing. Uh, I don't... Hmm. It, it's so Nintendo. Like, yeah, no new games. This is the year to do that sort of thing. This NES, uh, it's sort of like an NES remix kind of from what I from what I. If, if it was me. NES remix, like if they actually remixed the levels and, you know, put other characters from other franchises in, in there, like if they actually did work, I would concede that that is a new game. But if it's just a compilation of like segments of NES games, I, I'm not 
that doesn't count. That's a, that's still. I, a, I think it's the leaderboard chasing that I imagine is going to be there. That does tip it towards a new game. That's going to make us obsess. The you think a running. leaderboard is going to tip it towards? I mean, the I ru- so. the rumors that it's thirty dollars, so it's an actual like packaged product. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there's no right answer. I feel like I I go back and forth of like they're both wrong. <laughs> it's a yes or no question, and both are incorrect. How well, I think our part? community, Only Nintendo, our community <laughs> yeah, right. said that it won't count if they if it's just a compilation of games, even with leaderboards, like it won't count as a new game. But if they did um, tweaks to it, so they were oh, saying man. it's pretty much a, a wait and see. Well, also apparently there is a, a Nintendo game titled Banquet. It's just like that's the code of it. And Johnny, I swear, if it is Kirby Dream, oh my god, it could be eating uh, that chip. If it's the name of a Kirby game, (laughs) no, no, there is a rumor of a Kirby game, but it's not a new one. It's Rainbow Curse from the Wii U. I could see that happening. Bring it. I don't know how it's gonna work. I don't know how it's gonna work. But is it handheld only? Do you only play in handheld? Actually, so I don't like Kirby games very much. But I do really like the Rainbow Curse, and then whatever the one was on the DS, I like those games a lot. Where you dr- where you draw a line. No, no, it's like you draw. That's three DS was uh, yeah, Robobot. I forget what it was oh, called okay. on. I forget what it was called on the DS, but it, it's where you draw like a platform mm-hmm. to get Kirby to where it, it needs to go. Yeah, and it's actually pretty Some- pretty challenging. Some Kirby games are okay. That's about as far as I'll go with positivity <laughs> towards Kirby. <laughs> some, yeah, I'm, some of the games are all Don't right. worry. If you want to bash Kirby on the show, I'll, I'm all for it. That's that's fine. Carrying it on from uh, Bobby Paul's, man. He hated Kirby so, so much. He would stop the <laughs> podcast if I ever brought him up. Like, that was the end of the show. Well, speaking of Bobby Paul's, how did Carpool Gaming start? And... Uh, you know, what's your, your history with gaming podcasts? Yeah. I mean, how much time do you have? Like the, there's a, <laughs> there's a long history, um, you know, weaves in and out of Bobby Paul's and 64 Josh, you know, so many people, um, that I've met along the way inspired by, I feel like there's like a, a you know, year of 2015 podcast starter pack that a lot of us kind of like listen to like podcast beyond started so many, um, mm-hmm. podcast now inspired so many, especially when those guys went uh, and launched kind of funny to show it everybody. Like I'd never heard of Patreon before kind of funny happened back in 2015. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was like just obsessed with podcasts in general, but like mm, probably about, gosh, it's been a long time, man. Probably like 2012, 2013, something like that. When Apple, this is for the old geezers out there. You might remember uh, when podcast, the podcast app became its own thing. It used to uh-huh. be like, nestled into the music app actually so that's where you'd go and going even further back than that you'd sync up your ipod with your computer that's how you got your i your your podcast like you'd have to connect it to the computer with an internet connection sure. download all the stuff like we're going back now it was like that and then fax machine and pigeon carriers like it was <laughs> we're talking like ancient history here but once I started, I'd always heard about podcasts. A friend of mine kind of directed me to a few that he was listening to, which were not video game at all. And then uh, slowly but surely, I'm like, okay, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I was listening to like Mark Marin back in the day. Kevin mm. Smith had a podcast. A mm-hmm. um, few others. And then I just wanted more. It was like, it's free. Like, where has this been my whole life? I just have like this endless supply of great conversations that I really enjoyed. And this was also my my first step towards becoming my dad who listens to talk radio to this day at like full blast. It's like, well, that's a podcast for, for <laughs> yeah. us. So yeah, I don't even know how I, I was just searching for more and I ended up discovering IGN's podcast. Uh, so that's podcast beyond unlocked NBC, uh, and listen to those religiously. And I would say that there was something about podcast beyond that made it seem like we should all be doing this, you know? And then again, like that's where, uh, the kind of funny thing happened, and there's probably a few others in there. Um, quick shout out. Uh, at that time, I was listening to a show that's still going on now. It's called Married to the Games. Um, and that was the first sort of like indie podcast, if it, as it were, uh, that I would that I would have been listening to. I still listen to those guys every single week. And yeah, it was I think I saw 
I saw like a video of Mark Marin recording his podcast and it was him sitting down at his, his, his desk in his garage. He would always be recording his, his podcast in his garage one-on-one mm -hmm. just a, you know, just a 90 minute or whatever, uh, podcast and interview style, very open, usually very deep, very emotional, um, you know, life stories and things like that. And it was yeah. this visual of him sitting down in front of the microphone, putting his headphones on, getting ready to record that, that visual showed me how to do it. And I don't know how really else to describe or articulate it, but like that was a very particular moment for me because I was like, oh, you just sit down and you talk. Like it's obvious that mm -hmm. that's how it's done. Like for me, that was a big, that was a big like eye opener that, oh, you just sit down and, and, and you do it. So that inspired me to, um, at the time I was recording sort of like a, pretty typical um, video game podcast. There's like four of us sitting around the table talking about the news and what you're playing and that kind of thing. But it only lasted like three or four episodes. It was called We The Gamer Cast. It was for a website called WeTheNerdy.com, uh, which I was lucky enough to be invited to write at the time. And I was like, well, this kind of stinks. Like we don't have people showing up every week and people are dropping out the last minute. Like the commitment wasn't there. I'm like, can I just take this podcast on? I kind of have a different spin on it. I have a different idea for... Uh, what we could do with We The Gamer Cast. And it was born out of the fact that I couldn't get anybody to commit every single week. So I'm like, well, I'll just have a new person every week. I'll have, I'll have strangers from the internet show mm -hmm. up and, and interview them. And very much in the style of Mark Maron's podcast, where it was a new guest every week, uh, who was really the star of the show every week. That's what I did. I, I started uh, sort of like a new format of We The Gamer Cast, where, where I would sit down with one person and I would talk to them. Originally, it was very... Uh, originally very focused on like their origins of gaming. Like what was your first video game? What was your first console? That kind of stuff. And then I heard mm -hmm. Pokemon 47,000 times. I was like, okay, maybe we should, <laughs> we should expand beyond the, uh, the origins of, of video gaming. Um, and it, it slowly, but actually very quickly, I should say, turned into a lifestyle kind of podcast that was bound by video games. Video games is what brought us together, but I heard some of the most incredible stories from people from all over the world. And yeah, that's where, that's where I met Bobby Pulse. He was the fourth or fifth guest or something like that. And I had realized how hard it is to record a podcast, how unnatural it was for me. Um, it's just surprising for a lot of people who listen to me, but I'm actually a pretty shy person. And it, like doing that show is completely outside of what I would typically do. Like talking to strangers, just absolutely not. So I would, Back then, especially, this is back in 20... I think I started that show in December of 2015. I would have met Bobby in the early 2016. And I would worry myself sick all day. I would sign these guests up. I would, you know, set up the time and everything. And then I would just be so nervous. I had a pages of notes of questions that I would want to ask them just in case I, like, stumbled or got stuck or wasn't sure where to take the conversation. And then I just... Then Bobby showed up. I don't know where he's, he uh, goes in my DMs. I guess I, guess I would have had somebody who he knew on the show like two or three weeks before. And he reaches out and goes, hey, man, I, I listened to your show. I've been enjoying it. I would love to be on. And that was the whole point of the show is for people to, to come on. So that was an easy yes. And then he comes on, and you guys know Bobby. Like, he just talked my ears off before, <laughs> during, and after the show. I think I was on a Skype call back then for probably five hours or something like that. And and truth be told, I, I, I booked him for, I think it was a Sunday, and between... The time that I had booked him, I was already thinking, I'm done with this, man. This takes me forever, and I get nervous about this. I'm not good. Nobody's listening. All the reasons. So wait, how many episodes are you in now? Like five, five episodes. That's oh, wow, that already is... like, I'm ready to quit. Yeah, Josh has told us, in 6-4 Josh, has told us that most podcasts don't make it past episode seven. He passed that on to Bobby, and Bobby would preach that all the time. Once you make it to 10, like you're, you're good. Totally. And I was there, man. I would have been just another statistic. Just try it out, and you just don't realize, like, the grind that goes into it. Going from somebody who is listening to them to somebody who is creating them, it was booking the guests and sitting, even just sitting down for the time that it took. Like, that was new for me. I'd been enjoying podcasts at my leisure, not carving out two hours plus however mm -hmm. long people wanted to sit after that. So we did the show, and at the very end, I, you know, did the typical you know, tell people where they can find you on the internet. And Bobby launches into this. I will do that in a second, but I just want to say Sean. And he would always say Sean. He had this thick Jersey <laughs> accent that I wish I could do better. Uh, he just said, he, he's like, I've done so many shows. I've had the best time. 
sitting here talking with you. You've got to keep doing this. Um, if you're listening to this, get on this show. And he just went on and on. And I have chills even just thinking about that, that memory because that changed everything, you guys. I was ready to hang it up. And here comes Bobby Pauls who goes like, keep it up. Like, you've got something here. This is special. And listening back, like, it wasn't great. Um, but he just filled me with so much belief at that moment. And, yeah, we went on to do awesome things together. So, like, meeting Bobby Pauls, man, just by chance. On the internet, bumping into somebody on the internet. He just mm -hmm. like, happened to listen to this other dude on my show who happened to be on there only, but, like, I think we're all in a kind of funny group that I reached out to is like, would anybody want to do this? And I had three or four people say, yep. So I signed them up and Bobby heard one of them and changed everything, man. Chills, total chills. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. And then you went on to do Nintendo drive, which I think is one of my, it, it, that's right. Right. Like you, you did Nintendo drive. Was that the first one or was it Xbox drive? Oh, oh man. No. Well, Bobby and I, so he was on We The Gamer Cast. This was 2016. And then very shortly after, he's like, we got to do something together. Like, we got to, we have fun together. We're, we're chatting. And so, but Bobby was all about doing podcasts that weren't like anything else. He was mm -hmm. so stuck on doing something. And for anybody who doesn't know, Bobby Paul is a Nintendo guru. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, from COVID back in 2021. Um, Bobby was obsessed with doing things differently. And so he wanted to do a Nintendo podcast, but not not like you'd heard before. So we started a show called If We Ran Nintendo. Oh, and yeah, back then, yeah, yeah. this is the Wii U days, man. Like, this is like, Nintendo was not a good time. Like, Nintendo was was struggling. So we thought, well, we could do it better. A couple, you know, armchair quarterbacks coming at this. So we would always have uh, two topics. Each one of us would bring a topic to the table of something that we would want to do differently. And originally, it was things like, would we go back in time? Like, how would we do the the PlayStation deal? back when Nintendo and Sony were gonna were going to partner. Like, would we have stuck with it? Like, what would that have played out with? And then later on, we would, you know, talk about all sorts of different things. Like, would, it, was, it, was there a time when Miyamoto needed to retire? Like, this is... People don't know what it was like in the Wii U times, man. It was bad. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it was bad well. times. Uh, so we wanted to fix it. So we did that until, uh, well, I think into the Switch lifetime. So we thought, okay, well, our, our work here is done. Nintendo, fi we, we fixed it. We're, <laughs> we're finished here. Um, so we switched it to a show called uh, A Cup of Joe and Nintendo, which was very conversational. Like, I'd be up at 5 or 6 in the morning, and we'd just jump on a call, chat for 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, and then he would tell me that he had to go meet up with his mom or something. Like, and that's how we would end the show. Um, but the drives, the carpool gaming, really came, unfortunately, because Bobby passed away. Um, Bobby and I were doing all sorts of stuff together. And there's like skipping obviously huge gaps in years of of stuff here. But when Bobby passed away, there was a there was a big decision to be made about you know this community that we had cultivated. Um, and I was heartbroken. I still am heartbroken that Bobby's gone. So like, what do you do with that? Um, we we done so much of this together, and I had always felt like I was always really, even still, I I was really happy. I was very aware that I was his like number two, like Bobby was the star. He was, he's a bigger than life personality. He knew, he always knew what to do. He always knew what to say. He always knew how to handle conflict and come up with new ideas and all the, all these things. People were there for Bobby big time. And I just happened to be the guy he chose to be along for the ride. So when he passed away, brought a lot of that sort of to the forefront, like, okay, well now what? Like the star is gone. So what do we do? So we, uh, we kind of just went to the community. You guys tell us, what do you, what do you want from us? Do you want a Nintendo show? Do you want to, do you want a PlayStation show? And step by step, we kind of like, I would say like, now that I'm recounting the story, like we really rebuilt because there was so much that was broken when, um, when Bobby passed, he was sick for a number of months. He was out of the game for a while, but I never thought that we would get that call. I never thought he would be, um, like, I remember, I still remember getting the call that he had, that he had passed. It's just like, that's not, how this was supposed to go i knew he was really sick but um yeah that's a that's a forever thing so we had to we had to decide like do we close it up now or do we do we make something else and i mean now the story is told this is now three years running um the xbox drive was started somewhere along the ways uh that you know bobby encouraged me to do even though i had nothing to do with nintendo or anything he was doing 
Um, but it was the Nintendo stuff that really cultivated that community that now has flourished into an ongoing series of podcasts that we have at Carpool with the Nintendo Drive, PlayStation Drive, and Xbox Drive, as well as a bunch of stuff that we have at, on Patreon. It just it, It's an iterative process that I could go on and on about. It's just a matter of, it's an evolution. And the time scale that we're, we're talking about here is really where evolution can possibly happen. We the GamerCast started in 2015. That was nine, almost nine years ago now. So it's just slowly but surely, like little changes, little additions here and there, and then you blink and here's Carpool Gaming. We've got 12 posts across four podcasts that we do for free feeds and a bunch of Patreon exclusive stuff and streaming and all sorts of stuff, man. So it's been a journey and it's kind of nice to think about. So I appreciate the questions. Yeah, I mean... I just, do you ever look back? I mean, you did. You just looked back now, but did. do you ever yeah. take the time to like see where you started and where you are now? Because now, like you said, you just hired how many more people to, to do these we shows? We have 12 now. We have 12, yeah. That's incredible, man. And all because you, you took the chance to do something and then you kept doing it. Yeah, man. And even, even yeah, after it's... that adversity of, you know, losing a... a, a a partner and a long on longtime friend, like just having the ability to move on from that. And like, that takes a lot of courage and, and strength to do. So I, I'm glad like what you're doing with carpool is awesome. And, you know, I, I followed, followed you back when you were with Bobby, like it, it's really cool to see where you've come from and, and where you're at now. He, um, oh God, thank you guys for saying that. He, Bobby just, uh, sadly, I've, I've lost a few friends over the last couple of years. Um, but with Bobby, like he, he just showed the power of like encouraging others. You know, he just, he was very comfortable in his, in his own skin. He was very different. He was very unique, very talented, natural podcast, just born to be on camera, born to be on the mic. And even with all of that going for him, he, always helped other people he always lifted others he always encouraged others he let them see like just to believe in themselves and that's that's a lasting impact you know um i was like i said i was lucky enough to be the guy he chose but one of the things i saw along the way was a lot of duos jockeying for a position a lot of jealousy a lot of envy a lot of like oh you get all the attention or blah 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 i was happy to be bobby's number two he was just so great. And anybody would have killed to be on a regular podcast with him. You know, sometimes you would have people show up as guests or, you know, he, dude, he had 40,000 different shows. He had a, had a call-in show. He called, um, Red Shell Radio, I think it was called. And people would just like call in like a, like an old radio show. And then, you know, they have a 10 minute conversation and he'd be like, all right, next caller. Like it was so, he was so good about that stuff. And even with all of that, he just, it was so core to him to encourage other people. Uh, and he touched me with that. I, I was, I was totally lucky to, to have come across him because my life is completely changed complete in, in every aspect in my home life, in my work life, in my, this is now a, a lovely hobby. I've met some of the greatest people. I'm here chatting with you guys because of Bobby. Like, how cool is that? You know, I am. So to your question, cheesy, like I, I don't think about it enough, but I do try to reflect on mm -hmm. those moments. So there, there are pivotal moments within my life where, you know, it's butterfly effect. If I, if I'm late or if I decide yes or no or whatever, like my life looks completely different to the, where I work, to who I marry, to my kids being here. Like I think about that kind of stuff all <laughs> way too much actually, but tying it back to Bobby is special man, because yeah, he, it, I totally would have, uh, I totally would have given up. And I think um, even now, even after all these years, it's a grind. You know, any one of us can find any thousand reasons to just like stop doing it. It's way easier to not be doing this than to do it. But there's something, I don't know, maybe I'll throw it back to you. Like what keeps you going? This is a year in, man. Like you've you've certainly had to overcome stuff that what the, the community and the audience sees or doesn't see. But like you got to keep going. You could easily go, I've had enough. But you keep going. What keeps you guys going? I mean, so, yeah, I mean, we're only a year in and I can't speak for Johnny, but like 
I, for me, I think it is the interesting conversations that we have together, like on a deeper level, communication error is about the, the elevator pitch is, um, it's a gaming debate podcast where we may not always agree, but if we listen to what one another has to say, maybe we'll be able to fix our communication error. So with how the internet is today and everybody is yelling down each other's throats, like if we just sat down and had a, a conversation, maybe we can see where the other one is coming from. Yeah. And then uh, the next week after we're done discussing whatever topic we were discussing, we get to bring on a guest who we think is pretty knowledgeable or is a fan of that topic and get to hear from their point of view. Mm -hmm. So I think, and, and this is something that I'll let Johnny speak first. I'll have Johnny, what, if you want to answer that question, <laughs> you can. Yeah. I mean, what, what I really enjoy about doing this show and then other, other shows as well is just being able to talk to people that have similar interests, you know, in my day to day life, I don't really have, I don't really have friends that have similar interests to me. So, you know, being able to do once, twice a week to talk, talk to cheesy and talk to, you know, uh, Josh and, and crawler, like that just gives me an escape. And I really enjoy that. And, and mm. I like interacting with the community that we, that we've built so far, just seeing what they have to say. It's just, uh, I don't know what I would be doing if if I wasn't yeah yeah like doing this like I mean I have I have a partner she's she's fabulous she's great I I love spending time with her but outside of that I don't know like I don't know what I would do like I would work play games by myself and then just go to sleep and that's just not not the kind of life that I want oh. um, dude there is a clip of Bobby saying that exact thing exactly really? it, totally. Totally, totally. It must have been on the first week of Gamer Cast of us together. He's just like, I, I, he's like, he really wanted to stay in touch with uh, whatever is new, whatever's happening lately, because he felt like otherwise he would just, and to what Johnny was just said, like, I would just get up, I'd go to work, I'd come home, and I'd go to sleep, and I'd be on repeat. And he hated that idea of that's what life is for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's just you get out of touch, you don't know what, what's up, you sort of resign to the fact that you just end up getting old, and then that's it. He hated that, uh, and he talked very specifically about that exact cycle. That that gives me just deja vu, dude. He said exactly that, and that so, all resonates. What else would we be doing? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like yeah. it's just that's the thing. It becomes so second nature, and it's all you want. It's not even a decision anymore. Really, is 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 it? There's so much momentum. You just this is just what you do. Yeah, because I mean, I don't know. You, I think that you got to do something outside of work. I like, agree everybody is kind of just in the motion right now and nobody can get their head above water, but you got to find that thing that is just for you. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, God bless everybody who puts their hours into their work, but I don't know. Is that happiness? Like, are you, are you stoked to do that? You know, like mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I work, what's the saying? I work to live. I don't live to work. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. You don't want to like, I may not enjoy my work. If anybody's listening from work, sorry, but it's just the truth. <laughs> but like, I know I needed to pay the bills and this is a, if I was only working, I would, I would go crazy. Yeah. yeah you're always quoting office space. Like I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I gotta man. get out of here. I'm going to lose them. I'm about to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, I mean, I think that you are a really amazing host, and I'm not just saying that. And I'm very curious as to, like, who are your inspirations? Because to me, like, I think of you as, like, Conan O'Brien or Craig Ferguson. And what I mean by that is you really do take the time to listen to your guests. And that that's the kind of people that I like when you're watching somebody who is a host. It's not about them. They're not the star of the show. The guests are the star of the show. And they really just pay attention and listen to what it is that they're saying and just go off script because that's yeah. way more interesting than whatever they were going to say. So you mentioned like Mark Marin, um, you got Big time. other people that you're inspired by. Yeah. And I, I want to sort of like create this separation to say like, I am not them. I don't think that I am them. I'm nowhere near any of that. But, um, but like Larry King said something once upon a time, I'll, I'll, I'll butcher the, what the quote uh, but he really just talked a lot about what you just said. Like you ask a question and you get the hell out of the way and mm -hmm. you, 
you approach it from a genuine source of curiosity. And when he said that, like that really resonated with me, especially as I started to have people come on We The Gamer Cast with these fascinating stories. Sometimes I knew the world that they were kind of discussing. Sometimes I had no clue, but I genuinely wanted to learn more. And I was rewarded almost every time by this incredible story. One of the things that genuinely uh, got me going every time, like this really was like, I was, I was almost like hoping for someone to say this, was somebody saying something like, I've never told anybody this, or nobody's ever asked me that. Like those are the moments that just like, I would, as somebody asking those types of questions, I lived for that mm-hmm. because I knew, I could sense it. I could feel it in that moment that they were so glad that somebody finally asked them to talk about this thing that, Either it was a very painful thing for them to push through or something they were really excited about or whatever. Sometimes people were just like, they have this in them, which is, I know getting away from the inspiration, but it really was this Larry King that led to the the curiosity thing. But w- the reward was people all around us in our, in our everyday lives, they are dying to tell you something that they're passionate about. And I think that's what keeps us doing this as well as, you know, we don't even need to to be asked a question. You're just like, we turn on the mic and we hit record. So like, here we go. We get to tell you what's like happening deep in our core. And I found that through We The Gamer Cast that it wasn't even podcasters or, or anything. It was just everyday people were dying inside to just tell you. They wanted it out, man. They, mm-hmm. they needed to tell you about all the Pokemon they had, uh, <laughs> they had memorized or all their tips or tricks for this. They were stoked to tell me about stuff. Um, so that was, yeah, it, it just sort of like fueled the curiosity, like where else can I come from? Conan O'Brien, huge, you nailed it. Uh, Craig Ferguson, just, if I had an accent, love that guy. <laughs> uh, so, so funny. Um, but yeah, man, like then then it turned sort of inward with the podcast community. I was, I was inspired by so many people who I just got lucky enough to interact with. Of course, Bobby, Josh, um, the Nintendo dads were huge, huge man and they still are they're they're just a a great group of guys Uh, i mentioned married to the games um play some video games psvg those guys Uh, so i was i was inspired by you know the big names out there but slowly but surely like my world became entirely podcast all my friends were podcasters uh we were all helping each other you know bad bit back then he um back then he was poly games uh, he hmm. had a different YouTube channel. Um, I, actually, Bobby was the geek guru originally. He wasn't the Nintendo guru. Uh, he had a he had a different name. So yeah, really inspired by um, all those guys. Kind of funny for sure. Uh, you know, they taught us all how to do Patreon. <laughs> like, there's no <laughs> way around it. There's nobody who's podcasting now with a Patreon who can't give kudos or homage to to the kind of funny guys. So yeah, that that yeah, I think that's. It's as simple as that, honestly. The the Mark Maron thing was big. It was just noting that the the guest was the star. And it also, for me, kind of like I ripped his format off 100%. The format for We The Gamer Cast and, the, and WTF was exactly the same. It was a quick music intro. And then I would yammer on about whatever's going on in my life for whatever, five or 15 minutes. And then we get into an hour to 90 minute chat with the guest. And then I would close it out with a solo kind of thing. It's exactly what Mark well, Marin does. Yeah, and like so I remember being on We the Gamer Cast and we were just having a conversation. Yeah. I didn't know way, that you were recording. Had, yeah, I didn't know that you hit record. <laughs> yeah. So sorry I was about like that. I don't know as the show started. So you so got I, raw I, cheesy. So now you know all the messed up things he actually <laughs> says and it's it's recorded somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it, it became a bit of a running joke where the guests would say, like, like should we hit record or something? I was like, man, we're 30 minutes in. We're almost done. We're good. <laughs> we're good. I, always, I, I did always check to make sure, you know, that, um, you know, people didn't say anything that they didn't want out there. That was always a thing. But mm-hmm. uh, I, I did find that was on purpose because early early on, uh, I would give that, like, heads up, like, all right, three, two, one, and here we go. And, I th- like, that's how we ended up starting, but we're, we're like, we've done this a, a billion times. What I found with We The Gamer Cast, especially in the early days, was people didn't have their own shows. And so they were nervous. People often would show up very nervous. And it, that nervousness would would amplify. When I said, we would have like a nice chat, you know, just kind of get comfortable. And they say, okay, ready to go? And I could just see them go like, they, they, they changed. Their whole posture changed. I go, three, two, one. And then the, the start, quote unquote, the start of the podcast would be stilted. It would be stunted and uncomfortable when it's just like, just before I hit record, we were good and we were flowing. So we just kind of 
would blend that. U- usually, I wouldn't take the whole the whole recording. I would um, kind of I, I would listen back and go, okay, this is where the conversation kind of starts to flow a little bit. It, mm-hmm. it certainly wasn't from the moment you say hello and uh, probably meeting the person for the very first time. I chop probably the first excuse me the first ten minutes or so off, and then that would be what the audience would hear on the podcast. So that was that was a fun kind of just art to it as well. It kept me from other people being the ones to edit the show because how could they decide mm-hmm. when that would happen? So, but we haven't done We the Gamer Cast in a long time, man. Like, you guys are having me thinking very positively back on these memories, dude. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good show. That was a good time. Well, so I remember when Johnny and I were talking and we wanted to bring you on, like, this is long ago. Like, you, you've been one of our guests that we've wanted to bring on to the show for a while now. And mostly because... We wanted to know how much podcasting has changed your personal life. Like you, you mentioned at the beginning, you're very quiet, which is funny because I even had that moment of like, huh, I I guess I didn't think of that. But like I was in acting, I studied theater and it's the same thing is like you are put on the spot, like you're in your zone, right? It's the same thing as like when you tell a, a comedian to tell you a joke and they're like, no, I'm not going to tell you totally. a joke right now. It's not the right setting. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you, have you found that your life has changed in a uh, any kind of professional way because of podcasting? I mean, you just had your um, uh, your uh, your what am I trying to say, Johnny? Your uh, interview with uh, Victor Lucas. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, incredible. I mean, that's a literal dream come true. Um, yeah, we could get to that. Um, Professionally, I think one of the most notable things, and this really came from podcasting with Bobby for so many years, was you have to think on your feet. It's all about improv, mm-hmm. really. You know, yes, like and. a lot of it just yes and just you just keep going. The show must go on. You just yep. you know, you've got to be you gotta be quick. And sometimes and the show doesn't that. go where you want it to go, but it's like, hey, that actually worked out better, or you look at it and you just laugh later. Totally. Yeah, you can't yeah. live and die on a single show, man. Like, there's yeah. too many of them to for that. Some are good and some aren't as good. It's it's not a big deal. But I, I do find in my professional life, some people are born improvisers, as in, like, they can... Not that they're making stuff up as they go along, but they can think quickly on their feet. That they mm-hmm. can be prompted with a question or a challenge, and they go, okay, this is what we're going to do with this. And it is through conversation and dialogue, problem solving. There's a lot of creativity. There's a lot of stuff that... You know, if you guys were to dig behind the scenes as well, even the way we're doing this show was a choice by you guys. You know, like it probably, we probably don't even think about it anymore, but there's so many different ways to record a podcast. Do you do it live? Do you not do it live? Are you using Discord or <laughs> Skype? You, know, you, you make all these choices and you guys do it in collaboration with each other. So there's all these skills, there's all these decisions that you're making, probably not even realizing that you're doing it, but it's like fine tuning a lot of that stuff that how can it not impact your day-to-day life? Um, I do think it's really interesting, though, because, you know, I have a lot of positive things to say about how podcasting is, has enriched my life. What I realized, though, in my regular day-to-day life, though, is not everybody is a podcaster, you know? So you'd love to be able to, like, have, like, these great conversations with just, like, everybody, <laughs> and, like, uh. nobody wants to do it. <laughs> and it's like, that sucks, man. Like, I know great conversations are possible, mm-hmm. but not everybody wants to do it or maybe it's a a setting kind of thing. Like there's something about us sitting down in this fashion that allows us to converse in this way. It's very uh, engrossing and and I I really enjoy it. But you go into your day-to-day life and like nobody wants to sit and talk to you for an hour about, you know, given topic. It's not going to happen. So Mm -hmm. that's sort of like the, the more depressing side is that this only exists in this little space that we've created for ourselves and you go day to day and like, ah, I'd really love to make a top 10 list with my buddies at work about whatever, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, why can't I talk to them about Mario three versus Mario world? <laughs> you know, like there's such fun topics that we get to, that we get to have here that doesn't exist anywhere else. And maybe that's mm-hmm. the, maybe that's the addicting part to it is knowing that this is a special thing that we get to do um, that doesn't exist anywhere else. And luckily people listen and they get joy out of it. But I think that's what it is. It's very, natural sounding conversation it sounds like this should happen anytime 
There's nothing special about what we're doing at all. Yeah. Like, why doesn't this just happen on a Wednesday? You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the heck? I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to people and they're looking at me kind of weird as like, if, like, am I saying something wrong totally. or like, <laughs> I don't, should I shut up? Like, I just don't know. I don't get it. And I, Which I is try why to I do like, shut up. I'm just like, I'm good. Like, okay, I don't want to <laughs> deal with that. That's so yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, I try to keep the conversation going, but then the more I talk, it's like my brain hasn't caught up with my mouth. And uh, well, I also think it's, it's like it's, that. What? I, don't know, I was just going to say, it's just like the common knowledge. Like, we know we're going to talk about, you know, podcasts or, or video games, but like people in your everyday life, you don't know anything about them for the most part. Like, yeah, at your job, you might, you might know yep. a little bit about them. Like maybe mm -hmm. they like the sports team that you like, but mm -hmm. like how much can you get out of it? It always boils down to, oh, you know, it's pretty hot out today. You know, it might yes. rain a yes. little bit later. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So the you weather. Nailed it. Why is the weather something that we talk because about? Because it's it's, all it's the a time. universal Thank topic. You. It's a, it, like everybody can talk about the weather. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it. like we could talk about anything. But we always just go to the weather because it's it's like the safe thing to talk about, I guess. I don't know. It, it's so boring, too. Wow. Like, oh, I was just so about boring. to start a weather podcast. <laughs> Our team is about to. Carpool is about to start a weather podcast because they know Seriously. that it bothers me so much. Yeah. Because every time I would like, look, because after doing We The Gamer Cast for so long, I really want to know like how people are doing. When I say, like, how are you doing? I, I mean it. How are you doing? And uh -huh. Ryan would always say, like, oh, it's you know, 70 degrees outside or whatever. I'm like, that's not what I asked. Like, not even close to what I asked. And then it became this. I mean, you did start thing. talking about weather this week on Nintendo Drive. I can't believe it. I'm doing it myself. But yeah. I'm not going to talk about weather here. John, John, you like, people don't know each other. That's the sad reality is, like, you don't actually know others, which that's why you end up talking about the weather because mm -hmm. you don't know what actually somebody's passionate about what they actually want to talk about. And it's weird to ask. And it's weird to maybe um, like invade that personal space kind of thing. So that's, that's why we do this. Well, all right. So we've gotten, I'd say, pretty deep and, and sappy. But it's time to like turn up the heat a little bit. Okay. Which of your podcasts do you like the most? You have to pick <laughs> one go. <laughs> and you have to kill all the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Well, I'll, does it have to be one I'm doing now? Because I'd yeah. probably say if we ran Nintendo was was. Well, oh okay, we okay. Cast. I mean, we did Gamercast was really good too, man. I like doing that a lot. Yeah, uh, but yeah. but now now. Oh, that's so mean, dude. That's so <laughs> mean. <laughs> um, the Pants Patreon podcast for patrons podcast, which is Ooh, a Patreon exclusive that's podcast. A safe, safe, safe answer. I do it by myself. <laughs> yep, it's a solo show that people write in questions and I do that. You can't make me pick between the Xbox drive and the Nintendo drive. Come on, man. <laughs> I love them all. Is uh speaking of the Xbox drive, isn't it kind of funny just kind of ax their Xbox oh, yeah. podcast? They ax them all. They don't do any platform specific podcasts, Oh, really? As far as I was able to see. Yeah, even PS I love you done, Xcast done. I don't even know what the, did they have a Nintendo one? I don't know. Did Tim, no did Tim ever do one? Yeah, I mean, it's been years since uh, since I checked them out. That's a really interesting move. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that. I'd love to, like, I don't pay enough attention to Kind of Funny these days to really know the ins and outs of it. I can't tell if this is, like, the worst move possible or, like, really ahead of its time, and then we'll all end up doing this. I can't help but think that platform-specific podcasts have a certain advantage of just, like, you know, having an automatic search engine optimization kind of element to it. Like you want a PlayStation podcast, search for PlayStation podcast. Um, so I can't decide that or if it's just getting out of the sort of like tribalism, the console war BS, which I could totally get. Um, that sounds great. You know, if you're not going to do a platform specific podcast, then then you don't have to worry about Xbox is dead and has no games or PlayStation this or Nintendo blah, blah, blah. It's like you get out of that completely, I think. Um, but I don't know. I think it's, I, I'll be really interested to see how that plays out from a genuine sense of curiosity. Not that I hope anything good or bad. It's just like, what happens there? Cause they're, uh, they're a pretty, pretty important piece of gaming, mm. you know, media out there. So 
I don't know. I just don't know if they'll have like the same swing they had originally uh, with Podcast Beyond and then with Patreon, I would say. There's a lot of things that like a lot of us had learned from that. Um, I think about this kind of stuff all the time, though. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on what they've done over there. So I, I think for, for them, for kind of funny, they have the brand power to sure. pretty yeah. much do whatever they want, right? They yeah. are... People know them as kind of funny games. Like, I didn't, honestly, I didn't even know what the name of their Xbox podcast was. It's like X, Xcast or something. That is it. But you're right. Like, I mean, yeah. I don't know if a lot of people knew what it was called. So I think, you know, they would, they'll be able to do it. Maybe IGN goes a certain way. I mean, they, they just have podcasts well, beyond, not beyond. Um, beyond is PlayStation and unlocked is Xbox. Well, there's a, there's a general one, isn't there? Uh, they have Game Scoop, I think. Yeah, Game Scoop. They if yep. they just go Game Scoop as opposed to NBC and uh, the Xbox podcast. Oh my god, I can't. I don't even know the names of these podcasts. <laughs> PSI maybe Lobby? that's why they did it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, there, there uh, for be, me, there can be a thing about just like doing. I talk about this on the Xbox Drive a lot. Um, I'm seeing so many Xbox creators do the marketing for xbox and i can't stand it i hate it so much stop making your jpegs for for phil spencer they can they got billions of dollars they can do the marketing on their own just talk about the games that so so from that perspective i'm kind of okay with them wrapping up some of these console specific stuff just because it just waves the banner of all these platforms and i think that's dumb and and unfortunately there's not a whole lot of creativity in the field so people do the same podcast everybody does the same thing i'm so grateful that we're having this conversation just because it's different like you know, this is you, so engaging to me that was our that was our thought process well at least mine i was i didn't want to do another news podcast because there's they all there's do it. news everywhere but i wanted so you know we wanted something different you know to yeah, have conversations you. that you don't typically hear um and i and i think i that's why i really enjoy this show because it's not just like hey Nintendo released their financials. You know, let's talk about their financials, which I love talking about numbers. Don't get me wrong. I love the Nintendo Powercast. I love being on it, but I didn't want to just, I didn't want to <laughs> just be. Him. Crawler! Get rid of him, I know Josh. Crawler listens. Josh. I know Crawler, Crawler listens. That's not what I meant. I meant, uh, I didn't want another, I didn't want to do another news based podcast, if that makes sense makes sense and and the other sort of like caveat i would put on to that is i don't want to paint it with an entirely broad brush that just because you do a certain format makes you anything i think you guys are great at what you do actually like i think that's the requirement i think that's what people kind of forget is if you're going to do something that is like a format is is familiar bring something to the table like you better know what you're talking about if you're going to be doing numbers you should know what you're talking about. You shouldn't just like read the numbers off the PowerPoint that get leaked onto the internet and go like, oh, wow, 12.75 million units sold. Like, what I read else? The, I read letters one time. I had no <laughs> yeah, idea what I was talking like, about. What the heck is this? <laughs> letters. Yeah, that's why, I, that's why I'm on that show because I, I'm, the, I'm the numbers you guy. Do. Totally, totally. And not everybody can do that. You know, and, and sometimes it just takes practice. I don't know if you're always this way or it, it sometimes it takes practice. So it's not to detract anybody from from trying it out. It's just that's after doing it for so many years, that's just kind of how I feel about it. It's like if you're going to do something similar, be the best at it. Otherwise, try to create something maybe even just a little bit different, you know, just have a little fun with it. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the podcasts that we listen to, I think the three of us, everybody does something different. And if they don't, if it's like the same kind of format, it's different because of who they are Big time. and what they make it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, so to talk about, I, I listen to Nintendo Drive a lot, and that is a different vibe than even the Powercast. Like, I feel like on the Powercast, we're more trolly and. <laughs> Yeah, Nintendo, Nintendo Drive is a little bit more like cozy, and there's yeah. like the juxtaposition there. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... Do you do you feel like you anytime you see a tweet that's like, ah, oh, I wish the host would just get to the point? Do you feel like you're that show? Yeah, that's us. 
definitely. <laughs> that, and and we we will lean into that forever, dude. Like, is <laughs> well, there was that tweet that it was like, I want to find a, a Nintendo podcast that actually talks oh, about yes. the Nintendo games right away. It's like, come on, man, <laughs> chill out. I think, like, I think they might be talking about us. Yeah, well, <laughs> not only... Look, man, we leaned into that so hard because the Nintendo Drive was the first of the of the podcast we do at Carpool with four four hosts. So that just automatically meant the show was going to be longer. We're going to go off the rails. There's almost no, like, real... There's structure, but only, like, on a Google Doc. But otherwise, like, it's pretty, pretty free-flowing. And so we enjoyed that so much. We did that with the Xbox Drive and the PlayStation Drive as well. We just maxed out... Oh, we want four people on these things. We want maximum conversation. We just, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, and I continue, you know, and I don't know if, I don't even know what kind of numbers we do. I have no clue. All I know is that we've got a, a wonderful Discord community. We always get community questions kind of coming in. And that's pretty, pretty awesome. And I'm glad to not be chasing uh, any, any numbers, at least for my own sanity. Um, it's just, it's just not for, for me. Um, because I think I realized early on whether if I had if I had five listeners, I would I would not be happy because I didn't have 50 listeners. And if I had 50 listeners, I wouldn't be happy because I didn't have 500 listeners. And if I had 500, I wouldn't be happy because I didn't have 5000 and so on. Um, so I kind of ignored that part and started looking for other ways to get that reinforcement that things were going fairly well. Now, one thing that I could probably talk to you guys about for hours is I've been I've been in that mindset for so long. I do think at this point, like really just in this moment, I wonder if that causes me to stagnate a little bit where I just got to go like, well, if I'm not chasing numbers and I'm good with an active community, like, do I want a more active community? Like what's, how do you, like what, what's next? And John, there was a, you tweeted something. I think at one point oh, you geez. were talking about. Um, yeah. Well, 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 I'll say it because that could be bad. <laughs> No, no, no. It was good. It was good. It was, it, um, and I want to give you, I want to give you kudos because you're doing such a great job. And I think you were talking about like TikTok or YouTube, like brought in X number of dollars, whatever. I was like, hell yeah, dude. Like, look at that. Like you are doing it, dude. Like there's so many of us trying this and you're crushing it. And I think back to conversations that Josh and I have had, and he's encouraging me to, to do these things. And I'm like, I mean, I've got my, I've got an active community and I'm happy with this, but you tweeted that and it like turned my world upside down. I'm like, am I, am I missing something? Am I ignoring something like you? You're really, you're really doing it. And you have a lot of, I don't know if people realize like how much diligence work and discipline that takes to achieve what you're achieving. So yeah, it, it causes me to wonder, like I've been like happy in my own little land over here, but like, <laughs> Hell yeah, John's well, crushing it over here, dude. I mean, it's in this in the space and like content creation, it's hard not to look at numbers. And I I understand not wanting to. Like I I tried not to as much as I can because once once you're chasing numbers, I think you've already you've already lost the game, right? Yes. Like you you're already you're already on your way out. Like yeah. Once you once you're every single day, if you're like, oh my numbers are lower than they were yesterday, like you're you're already you're already out. Um, yeah. But I do, I do like to like look back at where I was, you know, five, six years ago, and to where I am now. And I always think to myself, well, like, yeah, maybe my videos don't get as many views as they do now, but like, look how far I came in, like, um. uh, full, full transparency. I just had a video pop off in TikTok, and I made more on that one video than I have in like four months. Like yeah. it's just one that makes you come back. <laughs> nice. Yeah. There's a bit of an addiction maybe there. <laughs> I find it interesting though, Sean, that you're talking about feeling stagnant. And I, I don't know if you really answered the question as if you do just want to stay in your happy place or if you do want to grow. And the only reason why I'm like kind of questioning that is because at least as of recent, and something that I have really enjoyed of your content online, like just Twitter posting, is you are trying to stay in the most positive mindset that you can. You have goals. You are cycling. You are, you're trying to grow yourself is what I've noticed. And uh, so for you to say that like you're, you're happy in your spot, which is totally cool. Like if that's where you want to be, awesome. But is it like you're afraid? 
to try to do more? I mean, you're already doing more, so you can't knock yourself. Yeah, it's a my threshold is is laser thin on, on this front because I think for a lot of people like outside looking in, you're like, how could you possibly think that? It's a it's a um, not a not a healthy place to be. I think to be always so self critical, like oh something's got to change, and because uh, I think when you have a team as well, it can impact relationships where I am almost never satisfied and I probably will never be satisfied with whatever. That is not the most fun to be around that I'm, mm. I'm hyper aware of that. Like something's always got to be bigger, better. We got to improve this. We got to work on that. We got to blah, blah, blah. Um, that can be, that can be a challenge. But um, as far as like always improving, I don't know what the, the, this is butchering another, yet another quote, but something to the effect of like, a man or a person has two lives and the second one begins when he realizes he only has one i'm about to turn 40 later this year and this is like so cliche it's not even funny but understanding how finite time is this is a lesson that bobby has taught me and a number of other friends who have passed away how fragile life is like the time is now we mm -hmm. cannot be messing around we are gonna blink and we're gonna be 80 if we're lucky to get there you know what i mean and we have the ability then this is happening now so like there's an impatience there but it's always driven from in my in my mind like a really positive place uh I, I have friends who are about my age who have declared themselves old and i'm like well that's a label you'll carry for the rest of your life because you're not getting any yeah. younger right if you're old now what are you when you're 65 what are you when you're 75 like you're gonna be older so mm -hmm. yeah trying to discover what's new trying to make the most out of like literally being able to walk not to get too deep back into well, it again but, no but like that's you, know? you did mention that in your latest nintendo drive where somebody mentioned that what you guys do in your discord is you all say good morning to each other yeah and somebody asked what makes a good morning and you replied getting up getting up dude like what else Oh man, there's a, there's a lot going on in my life right now, man. Like I just have this, like how lucky are we to even be here? Mm -hmm. The, the chances that we're here are astronomical. It is insane. You could easily not be here, you know, whether, yeah. so that's a whole, that's a whole other thing that I've, at first it was a bit of a kernel of an idea, but it has, it has grown into really a mentality day to day. There's so much, I, I was just at work earlier today and this person was just like stressing over this thing related entirely and only to work. It was ruining her day. And it's like, we could not be here. We could, yeah. you know, be any of these people who are outside. I happen to work in a hospital. There's all these people who are like, their lives are forever changed by whatever they're dealing with out there. Yeah. And we're sitting out here worried about this email or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like a little little perspective I think is is really positive. And I, it's a conscious effort, Cheesy. Like, I am, like I said, I'm very self-critical. I can see the worst in everything very easily. I can see there's a problem with this, and this is never going to give it. I can very easily uh, spiral. Spiral is, is, is a problem for me. Um, but it's quite balanced out by the fact that, yeah, the sun was shining today. Um, actually, it wasn't. It was raining today. But, uh, <laughs> talk <laughs> about weather. Did, Can't talk about weather. come up. I know. The sun, <laughs> well, and, and we could talk about space because technically the sun didn't actually come up. The earth okay. rotated all such right, that right. it kind of went up Yeah, your sky. favorite topic. I love space, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I just think that, um, honestly, there's so many people that, Johnny and I can thank for starting this podcast, like in six, four Josh and crawler and many of the people that we listen to, but for you, at least I know Johnny and I really wanted a community and that is something that you do extremely well with all of your shows. Um, and you, you just get everybody involved and everybody feels like they are part mm -hmm. of something. And I think that that is really special that you give them a place to feel that they're home, Thanks, you know, man. like they just have an escape and you give that to them. Even if they are having a bad day, like you were saying, like there's so many things that we could worry about. You give them the space to just relax and have a good Thanks, time. Fam. I don't know exactly how that's happening. Um, but there's a, even as I'm talking to you guys, like I'm realizing like my, 
my shoulders are dropping. I'm like very relaxed actually. And I think that maybe is what I try to bring to the table because again, this is not natural for me to be relaxed. It's quite natural for me to wake up and go like, all right, what's next? Like my guard is off and up and there's a lot of psychological psychoanalysis that can be uh, kind of brought to that. But what I realize what happens when we kind of just like let our guards down a little, we can kind of relax a little bit. We can get to know one another. And that's been something that I've been able to discover through podcasting is what that's like just to let your guard down a little bit and maybe let people in a little bit. You let somebody like Bobby Paul's in and he changes your life entirely versus where I would have been up before where my defenses were up really scared about this, that, or the other thing. And I wouldn't have experienced any of it. So I feel like, like, it's really nice of you to say that. I'm like, I'm struggling to figure out what did we do exactly? And I think it's more about the, the approach and the mentality um, and being open and vulnerable with each other um, and allowing, I think that makes it safe for other people to do that as well. Um, but even then, like there's times where that still burns me. There's still times where even I question, should I let everybody in? Should I like, you know, you, you, there's a, you, you get exposed I think when you when you do that, and every once in a while, I do get burnt. I get I'm a I'm a pretty um, I'm a pretty sensitive person, and every once in a while, I'll, I'll get hurt pretty bad. Um, we had a couple of people leave Carpool Gaming earlier this year, and that it it roasted me, dude. Like it completely it was it was it sucked. It's um I I treasure friendships and relationships probably more than I more than I should, and ultimately nothing lasts forever. And I don't blame anybody for making the decisions that they did. Um, but not only when they left it, but even when we brought other people in, like it was a really painful, it was actually a very painful experience. Um, mm -hmm. so your comments tonight are very, they're well received because I do have to balance that out. The, the, the pain sometimes can outshine the positives and I can lose sight of the things that are going well because I'm like, oh man, there was some, some pretty, st there's some stuff that just like really, really cut deep earlier in 2024, um, so it's nice to know that we're still doing a couple things that are okay. But as sure as sometimes that I sound about this, that, or the other thing, like I assure you there are crippling self-doubt thoughts happening constantly. So I try to keep people around me to, to keep me balanced. But um, yeah, I'm never sure about anything, like <laughs> like at all. So uh, we just keep trying things. And yeah, I, I it's a dangerous space to get into when you kind of spiral in, in self-doubt. I, I discourage that as much as possible. Uh, so yeah, in this moment, I'm really, really appreciative of your guys's questions and just being able to talk this through because you can kind of lose sight of the good stuff when, when things get tough for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's, it's been a pleasure having you on and, um, I, I know Johnny and I are just super, grateful uh, johnny i don't know if you have anything else that you want to talk about because i honestly i feel like even though sean you are in canada i feel like you know <laughs> we've known each other and in mm. the weirdest way too that i Same. met you yeah. was through uh our love of pop star oh dude yes yes never uh, stop never stop yeah never stop johnny doesn't know what we're talking about yeah i have no idea what you're talking about Andy Samberg. <laughs> yeah, it's a Lonely Island movie, basically SNL humor. You know, you you know what you're in for. Yeah. But it was uh, Andy Samberg playing this character named Connor for real, and uh, <laughs> it's like a riff on Justin Bieber and uh, Macklemore, and thinking that he's the best. But what made it great is that it's this mockumentary, so you would get people like Simon Cowell and Mariah Carey Seal. and like <laughs> Seal and people that are just like commenting on like his career is crazy and like he he blew up to stardom so fast, and then you see him kind of crash and burn, and uh, it's just a great movie. It's like Spinal Tap. I don't know if you've seen that, Johnny. Oh yeah, I have no idea. No. You know what okay. it's like? It's like Zoolander, actually. I was going to say it's the okay. generation of Zoolander, <laughs> no, I've seen but it came Zoolander. out like 10 years ago. I've seen Zoolander. Yeah. It's kind of like Zoolander, yeah. I mean, I know yeah, Lonely but... Island. Like, I, I've seen their stuff before. Like, I'm on a boat. That was, I don't yep. know how long ago that was now. Probably 20 years ago. Jeez. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, I mean, uh, to, to reiterate the fact, this is actually, I really enjoyed this conversation because it, yeah. it kind of gave us more perspective on 
like what and hopefully gives the listeners some perspective of like what goes into all of this. And I want to reiterate, like, so I work as a tax accountant and people get so stressed out if they, you know, make a mistake on a tax return. And it's like, nobody's dying. Like, who cares? It doesn't, none of this matters. None of this matters. Mm -hmm. yep. Just get your paycheck and then do what you love after work. Find balance. Definitely. Like I try to keep it all in perspective because like, you can't be nihilistic about anything either. Like you can't be like, well, nothing, nothing matters at all. Like there's, there is that, like, there's gotta be a reason <laughs> there's gotta mm -hmm. be something, but yeah. yeah, like it's not the end of the world, you know, if this, that, or the other happens, it, just keep it all, keep it all leveled out. But I, there's, there's, you know, days, weeks, or maybe sometimes months of the year where I go like, yeah, you know, we're all fast forward. We're all going to die soon. And there's no sequel. <laughs> like nobody will remember us. And it's Jeez. like, who gives a damn, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's like, that's not going to be, that can't be positive either. Like it's trying to avoid the stress, but that also can't be a healthy mindset either. So. You know, we woke up this morning. That's a good thing for mm -hmm. me. I get a little, I get a lot of joy out of this Diet Pepsi that I drink daily. Well, like, wait, hold up. Diet Pepsi. I thought it was Diet Coke. From McDonald's. Very specifically, Diet Coke is from, from McDonald's. It's, it's different. McDonald's okay. does it different. Yeah. Okay. It's only, otherwise, yeah, if I'm at the store, it's a Diet Pepsi. Always. Pepsi. Pepsi's better than Coke. Hell yeah. All there day. We go. All day. Yeah. All there we go. That, that could be, so we, we've had this Super Mario Bros. 3 versus World mm -hmm. discussion for a year now. So we're trying to figure out another, like, debate mm. topic. We can do Pepsi versus Coke. Yeah. Sparkling Coke water. Will, Coke will win every time, man. Coke is, <laughs> is so much more popular. This is like, this is me embodied. My preference for Pepsi is... It, it, like take that across everything else. I'm always on the, the Pepsi side of things. I'm always on the underdog. That's why I like Xbox, you know, like it's Pepsi, Xbox, all that kind of Canada, you know, it's just <laughs> 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 yeah. That's yeah. Funny. yeah. Canada well, is the Pepsi of North America. <laughs> 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 so stupid. <laughs> That's hilarious. Sean, thank you so much man um i know that this was probably uh, maybe a little bit of a emotional episode for you but i i do think that you you kind of brought bobby into this episode oh, and man. um yeah. you know I, I think he's i don't know you know what people believe in or whatever but like in these kind of moments there's something that's like he's there with you he's you here. know yeah. 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 I have, I have some of his stuff behind me. Actually, his family sent to me. Yeah. I'm always thinking of Bobby. Yeah. I appreciate the, the, oh, this, this conversation happened exactly when it was meant to. I know we've been meaning to do this for a long time. Um, this evening was a perfect moment to have a conversation like this. Uh, and I really appreciate it because literally I've been like scribbling in my notepad, just trying to have this conversation with myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate being able to, uh, chat with you guys because you've you've been doing it um you do it well and you, it, it's rare to be able to have that kind of that kind of chat with people who know what the hell you're even saying <laughs> you know and be able to converse about it because yeah there's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes um you know that is fun to do but people just don't see it so i appreciate yeah. you guys just let me kind of just talk through it a little bit very helpful thank you uh where can people find you I would love for people to go check out youtube.com slash Nintendo guru. We've been talking about Bobby a lot here. Go see what I'm talking about, man. You will not find another Animal Crossing creator like Bobby Pauls, man. This guy was, he's a huge personality. He's from Jersey and he loved Animal Crossing. He's going to tell you about trees and the museum uh, and all of these sorts of things. He said museum so great. He's just the best. <laughs> um, go Breaking check out bells. Bobby's. Breaking Bells was his podcast. Yeah, that was great. Um, that's that's oh, a perfect dude. name for a podcast. Perfect So name. great. Yeah, Bobby Paul. Um, but as far as my stuff, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Capri. Of course, Sean LeConnery Capri, like the pants. Um, carpoolgaming.com is where you find everything. Um, obviously, we do our Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, and also an RPG. We have an RPG show, which I love that we <laughs> have that, man. It's like, this is where all, uh, all the the role-playing game geeks come out to let their freak flag fly, man. It's so fun. I love it. So, yeah, Carpool Gaming on all the things. And just appreciate you guys having me on tonight.
I'm Johnny, where do people find you? I'm uh, Johnny Bo everywhere. Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and the Nintendo Powercast. Well, maybe you until they kick me off. Damn. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, you can find me on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Nintendo Powercast, Cheesy C64, C H E E Z Y C 64. Sean, any closing thoughts? Uh, Star Fox 64 had one great multiplayer map out of two, and it was still awesome. <laughs>